Hey guys, my name is Devonte, and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. Can I do something for a second? I hope you guys don't mind. Hang on for a second. I feel as if I should probably appropriately contextualize what I want to talk about today because, you know, I hear this word thrown around a lot, tribalism. Whether we're talking about sports, whether we're talking about politics, whether we're just trying to talk about things in everyday life that divides us. Tribalism is very strong currently right now in the world, especially in America. You have Democrats, you have Republicans, you have conservatives, you have progressives. Even within each sub, e even within each group, there's tribalism that lies within. You know, whether you have conservatives versus neocons, or maybe you have liberals versus progressives, it's just an ongoing process that does not seem to want to subside itself for anything. But tribalism, and I quote states, a conscious and loyalty or tribal conscious and loyalty, strong and group loyalty. An example is tribalism within the group is strong. The corrupting influence of tribalism is how you use it in the sentence. The examples actually, because I'm a complete dipshit and I read the examples rather than the actual, you know, using the sentence example. Football, for all its unabashed ties to ver uh, virulent, 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 tribalism or stunch region, uh, regionalism makes those inherent differences fairly difficult to mend. I can go on and on, but in reality, you know what tribalism is? Two dumb fucks arguing whether something is incredibly positive or incredibly negative, when in reality, if you meet in the middle nine times out of ten, that's going to be the correct answer. Professional wrestling as a whole is complete and utter shit. You have wrestling fans going, AEW is shit. No, WWE is shit. No, AEW is shit. No, WWE is shit. No, 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 no. They're both shits. They're both. Now, granted, I will say that WWE is more like piss and AEW is more like shit. And would I rather be pissed on than shit on? I guess. Doesn't mean I want anything to happen to me within my lifetime, though. Am I right or am I wrong? I'm right because I'm Devontae, motherfucker. That brings us to today's topic because we have a healthy dose. And hey, here's the thing. Here's the thing about Chris Jericho. Before I read this, I understand you work for the company. I understand you want to play ball for your team. I understand you want to root for your team. But there's a difference, a very, very, very strong difference between having a healthy dose of copium and thinking to yourself that, man, you know what? Our team is great. Our team is this. Our team is that. Because we put on the better show. And this versus that. And this versus that. And then there's delusion. And at first, Jericho was dealing with a healthy dose of copium, and then he started to he started to indulge in the delusion. So I want to read this article for you guys really quick. If you want to follow along, as always, the link is in the description box below. Look above you. See what I did there? No, you didn't. I don't know what I did there. This article states, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I just want the excerpt quoting Jericho. You know... You can only bring in Cena and Undertaker and Cody and everybody else so much because nobody wants to work on their secondary show all the time. Okay. And it was a fun little, hey, F you, AEW. I didn't even really worry about it. I told Tony, well, if you want to fire back, bring in Shaq and Snoop Dogg and those types of guys, Mike Tyson. But Tony didn't do that. We relied on our show and our guys and our girls, meaning WWE's ex-talent, and that's the way it's always been for us. This would be like a football game where you bring in all your top stars for years prior and beat the other team 30 to 26. It's like a video game. Let's bring in Tom Brady from five years ago and then play him for, for one game against Chris Jericho. Okay, you guys won, but you only won 30 to 26, he said. <laughs> now you see, how the copium just gradually starts to increase and increase and increase and it breaks through that threshold of complete and utter fucking delusion. But it gets even better. You think it's done? No, it gets even better. Jericho closes out this <laughs> statement, if you will, by saying, and I quote, so don't get too far up your own ass because you didn't do that good of a job as far as crushing us. And our show was better than theirs, quite frankly. So it doesn't bother me. It's competition, man. It's good for the fans, man. It's good for the companies, man. Okay, he didn't say man that many times. I just envisioned Jericho probably saying that like while he's actually talking his sentences. Drink it in, man. That's my old YouTube panel, by the way. 
<sighs> so that closes that out. And like I said, it's one thing to think highly of your team. There's another thing when you start to put yourself in the same grace as Tom fucking Brady, Chris Jericho. And by the way, this whole this whole little narrative he wants to put out there. Oh, we beat them 30 to 26. As if they would insinuate that they won by a field goal. I mean, what, isn't field goal like three points? Even burst. You gave me uneven numbers. What are you trying to say, Jericho? No, fucker. You didn't lose 30 to 26. If you had to actually say it was more like mm, 72 to maybe 26. That's, that's probably what it's more like. It's more like 72 to 26. May I remind you the actual score in regards to the viewership numbers, Jericho? I can't remember the ratings, but I damn sure remember those viewership numbers. Not exactly, not directly. I'm missing the point here. It was 900,000 plus via NXT and 600,000 plus via AEW. And mind you, it wasn't like 690,000 versus 900,000. No, 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 no. It was like 900,000 plus going into the 30s and the 40 range versus the early early 600,000s, meaning you got your ass cheeks clapped, brutally clapped by well over 300,000 views, Jericho. There is no 30 to 26. You got your ass smashed. There was no winning by a field goal. You got your ass smashed. There is no winning by a safety zone tackle. And then like you get points from the no, 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 no. It was touchdown after touchdown after touchdown after touchdown. And mind you, I agree with Jericho. Personally speaking, I thought AEW that night was better than NXT. Not to say that that was anything worth, you know, bragging about. Because I thought both show I thought both shows that night sucked regardless. Go check out my NXT review and AEW review. Grow some hair on your balls. But like overall, like they, they both sucked. I just thought AEW was a better show than NXT, and by and barely, if it wasn't for that last seven with Edge and Christian, all that hollow blue that broke loose, then NXT would have took it for that night. But what I'm alluding as the fact that Jericho seeing all this bullshit, while at the same time, the majority of the people that I hear talk about the tribalism, it usually comes from the AEW faithful. Not the fans, mind you, because they're usually locked, engaged in battle, Spartan versus Spartan, Roman versus Roman, and I'm not talking about Reigns, Locked horns and, and 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 long poles with sharp objects on the end of it. They're locked in battle with AEW and WWE like they fucking got paid money to do so. <sighs> it's your side, AEW, that usually likes to pour fuel on that fire of tribalism. Not just Jericho, but even your boss, Tony Khan. He did that last week. He was running down some tweets. Dude was looking at his feet. Thought he was looking at his meat, but it was a little bit obsolete. Look, here's the thing, here's the thing. Personally speaking, personally speaking, I'm the kind of guy that likes to bring receipts. Cause you probably, people are like, what are you talking about, Devonte? No one on AEW shots ever talks about the tribalism. Yeah, just nitpicking. No one talks about that. I See, that's why I got links down in the description box below. I want to kind of give you guys a little bit of an excerpt from MJF and Adam Cole that talks about the so-called tribalism that prolongs into professional wrestling and won't succeed unless one company perishes in the mind of the average dumb fuck wrestling fan. Again, like always, I'm too goddamn lazy to read the entire article, so follow along the excerpt, you stupid fuck. There's this weird thing going on in professional wrestling where all I see is fans online, the way they communicate with each other. It's like an all out war, Friedman said, MJF, obviously. If you didn't know, just go look at last week's show with Friedman written on the quarters by, you know, Saddam Hussein. Oh, excuse me, Adolf Hitler. Oh, excuse me, uh, Juice Robinson. Just so you guys know, what's not what's, uh, that's not what's going on with the wrestlers. We're all rooting for each other on, on excuse me, whoa, what the hell? We're all we're all rooting each other on because realistically the better the two companies are doing the more money we're gonna make so like stop arguing we're all having a freaking blast i'm watching la night and cody rose every week and i'm having a blast just like i know everybody else is having a blast just like i know that there are fans out there watching having a blast no they're not better than you baby having a blast every single week he added there's so much great professional wrestling going on and there's more than enough room for it clearly because aew is about to have the biggest crowd this is not hyperbole the biggest crowd ever in the history of our sport that is hyperbole because that's not true and i'm headlining it when i think about it that's insane to me that's going all the way back before um all out obviously 
Man, they really love to exaggerate, don't they? 30 to 26. No, it was a complete blowout. Ah, we're going to have the biggest crowd in wrestling history. No, you went out of your way to inflate your numbers. That's how badly you did in regards to your prediction with the numbers in itself. I digress. I digress. Put your foot in your mouth, Jericho, because the people that actually talk about the tribalism and why it's so bad are usually the ones that are engaged with in the practice in itself. Here's the thing that I feel AEW should do, because in reality, you're coming up on 2024 and Triple H is in full throttle creative now. It's been confirmed and what we're seeing within the product right now, it is confirmed. And it's not like Vince McMahon is in a position to put himself right back into said position. You got that Ari Emanuel dude who pretty much made Triple H the go-to guy in regards of what the product is currently going to be engaged with, creatively speaking. And in my opinion, people can sit here and they can shake their hands and disbelieve and go stare in the mirror and wonder about their lives and where the fuck is going because I happen to have a disagreement with them. Triple H is a better book of the events of man curling at the moment. Triple H is better at production and creative overall at the moment. Production, what I mean by that, is actually producing the skits, producing the promos, producing all the things that are usually going with them professional wrestling uh, sorry about that I had to freaking you know drown on some pussy juice for a minute i apologize about that uh all the things that go on backstage you have i just actually seen something a couple days ago that talked about the wrestlers and great morale so we're now literally back into the same position we were in this time last year before we knew vince was actually coming back to come kill everybody in their careers we're right back into the same position and it doesn't look like this position is going anywhere anytime soon Triple H going into 2024, I truly believe will not be a boom period for the company. Maybe business-wise it might be, but I mean as far as popularity is considered, I don't believe it's going to be the case. But that still doesn't take away from the fact that the company, at least within the IWC, is going to get a lot of good faith and a lot of goodwill from the wrestling fans overall. And right now, currently, AEW is now in bad shape. And here's the thing, it always kind of seems that the pendulum usually swings back and forth. One minute AEW is doing good and WWE is doing terrible, the next minute WWE is doing terrible and AEW is doing good. It's been going back and forth like that since at least 2020 but right now we're in a position with all the stuff currently going on within triple h's company and then you constantly see the viewership number falling within aew dynamite where you shouldn't be listening to chris jericho and his bullshit because all chris jericho's bullshit is going to get you is to sit there and then wallow in your complacency chris jericho is the type of father of professional wrestling speaking to keep his daughter inside some diapers full of shit and waiting for the wife to get home to change the pamper because he's too busy making some food in his blender because he's a fat fuck or maybe he's too drunk to realize that his daughter smells like a million asses that's the kind of guy chris jericho is he rather just sit back and just play stupid play delusional and just say to himself well here's my opinion that i'm going to try to say this fact well, that's not going to help your company, Tony Khan, because going into 2024, I can tell you this much right now. Triple H right now has a chip on his shoulder because it's not just Vince McMahon that's probably looking at him. Most likely people don't want to admit it, but let's just say it family, family, not business is business. I guarantee you that Vince McMahon is probably hoping on Triple H's downfall just so Ario could put fucking um, Vince back into the position to run the helmet creative again, because that's 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 what Vince really wants to be back in. So he really wants to run creative. He wants to do the day by day operations because it's in his blood he doesn't care about money he has money already vince is one of the richest people in the fucking world why the fuck does he care about goddamn money what vince cares about is power and triple h currently at the moment has that power and whether he's family members with him or not godson son-in-law son and dad sad and mom son and mom taboo sex pure sex t pure taboo whatever the case you want to say he still wants that power I would dare say that Vince Man cares more about power than he actually does care about the people around him. But he's not in power. Triple H is. And going into WrestleMania, this is Triple H's WrestleMania. This is Triple H's Warrior Rumble. This is Triple H's Survivor Series. And here you have Tony Khan right now, wallowing in misery, putting on bullshit shows like he put on last night. Having guys flippity D and look at me, all this bullshit going around, Cirque du Soleil nonsense. Whereas you have Triple A starting to build up characters to give a reason to the Cirque du Soleil bullshit. Shinsuke Nakamura and Ricochet, for an example, probably had the least build going into Monday Night Raw. Having the kind of match that they did. Put that on AEW Dynamite, that's probably the second, maybe the third most built feud going on in the show right behind mjf and uh jy which is not that big of a deal anyways and the actual big few being edge and christian 
that feud, that match that needed that feud would have probably been third in regards to build. And that fucking feud building was pretty much nothing. It was such a nothing that it opened up the show for Raw. That's what I'm talking about. It's that kind of complacency that's going to fuck you over in the end of the day, Tony Khan. It's that kind of complacency listening to a Chris Jericho chart starting to whistle through the graveyard. Fucking tiptoeing through the tulips. With me. Oh. Yeah, no, that's Jericho. He's tiptoeing through the tulips because in the end of the day, he's going to get paid. In the end of the day, he's going to get his moolah. In the end of the day, he will always be a legend. He's already one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. He has nothing to fucking lose. This is his project just as much as it's Tony Khan's project. So he'll say whatever bullshit and the means of it not being consequences on him in the end of the day. So don't listen to it, Tony Khan. Put on a better product and put yourself into a position where you can actually adequately beg, actually battle Triple H for real, for real. No nonsense. No, oh, look at us. We have a better show because the fans say so, because I say so. No. What matters is what the numbers say. What matters is what the viewership numbers say. What matters is what those ratings say. And what it said last week that you got your asses kicked. And what it says most likely tomorrow, as a matter of fact, the AEW down at probably now, it's 2.30 right now. I guarantee you they didn't do 900,000. You know, let me not say that. I don't want to put myself into a bubble where I have to fucking, you know what? Yeah, I'll say it. They didn't do 900,000. I'll say it. I don't believe they did 900,000 fans. I'll say it. And that's pathetic considering where you were last year. And now you're in your down, your most down period since probably 2019, honestly, after the first show. You're in your most down period since going up against a higher morale Triple H with a chip on his shoulder with the rest of his roster with a chip on their shoulders, trying to probably get ready to innovate a bunch of different concepts that he probably had wrapped up in his mind, but wasn't able to execute. And all that does at the end of the day is take wrestlers from your side to bring over to his side, like a Cody Rhodes, like a Jade Cargill. Trust me, it's going to continue because in the end of the day, all you had for yourself going, all AEW had for itself going was the Wonderland to be free from the, the tyrannical Vince McMahon's clutch and dictatorship. But now that's gone. Now that's gone. Now all you have within WWE is that they are still the main people in town. They're still the big boys in town. While having everything that you advocate for, plus more, because they can get more exposure between all three brands, whether that's NXT, w, uh, Raw, or SmackDown. And with Raw and SmackDown, those two are two highest commodities. The, the Raw and SmackDown are bigger commodities than Dynamite by itself. It goes SmackDown, Raw, Dynamite, overall, currently at the moment. Get your shit together, Tony Khan. And don't listen to dumbass marks like Jericho, who's my favorite wrestler of all time, by the way. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Do you agree with the commentary? Do you agree with the nonsense bullshit Jericho tried to propagate upon your eyes? Do you agree with any of the stuff that's currently going on at the moment with Tony Khan's company versus Triple H's company? And where do you see the company is going to 2024 with this bullshit mindset that Jericho just tried to present to the rest of you sheep who are out there saying to yourselves, WWE versus AEW, WWE versus AEW. No, you make an observation and you look at what's currently going on and then you make an acute conclusion based off of that observation. Not blindly going after a company or blindly liking the company because they happen to be fitting your identity or whatever bullshit case that may be let me get the fuck up out of here i got more important things to do like using my sock don't ask why i'll tell you why jacking off there you go as always my name is Devonte, and i'll catch you guys later deuces p eyes where's my motherfucking vaseline at